Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Math's 5th Grade, Module 7, Lesson 4. I'm going to start off by going over the I can objective that says I can subtract mixed numbers by renaming. And the learning objective is rename to find the difference of two mixed numbers. And the prior learning says students compared two fractions with unlike denominators and unlike numerators. Students added and subtracted mixed numbers with like denominators, and students solved problems involving addition and subtraction of fractions. All right, so let's go ahead and move into the lesson on page 161. It starts with a word problem that says Larry rides his bike to the park. On his way home, he gets a flat tire. How far does Larry have to walk his bike to get home? So if you look over to the yellow square to the right, it shows from home to the park is three and one fourth. And then from the park to Larry's flat tire is two and three eighths. So we need to figure out what's left from where Larry got his flat tire to home. So we're trying to figure out that distance. We are going to be subtracting to find out what's left. So for A, write an expression. We know that we're going to start with our three and one fourth and we're gonna be subtracting our two and our three eighths. All right, so for B, it says use fraction strips to represent the distance Larry rode to the park as an equivalent fraction with a denominator of eight. Then write a new subtraction expression. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna show you what it looks like originally, I'm gonna show you what it looks like in equivalent fractions, then I'm going to write the equivalent fraction. All right, so right now, and I'm leaving out the whole numbers for this, just focusing on the fraction piece. Right now we have three and one fourth. So there is my one fourth, and then I have two and the three eighths. So the red is my three of the eighth pieces. And I'm gonna be subtracting three eighths from one fourth. And if you're looking at this saying, mm, the three eighths is larger than one fourth, so how am I gonna subtract it? You're on the right path here. All right, so I need to make equivalent fractions now. My denominators are four and eight, and I know that I can change my one fourth to be two eighths. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like with my fractional pieces now. All right, so I changed my one fourth. I'll show you that they are equal. I changed my one fourth to two eighths, which are exactly the same, and I left my three eighths. All right, so let's go ahead and write this down using our new equivalent fractions. So I have three and one fourth, which I changed to three and two eighths, and I'm gonna be subtracting what was already there, the two and three eighths. All right, so C says, do you have enough fraction strips to subtract the fractional part of the distance Harry rode home? Do you have enough in your two eighths to subtract your three eighths? No, right, the bottom is bigger. So we're gonna go ahead and say no. And all I'm gonna say is the first numerator is too small. So first numerator is too small. All right, so for D it says, how can you represent the distance Larry rode to the park using fraction strips so that you are able to subtract the distance Larry rode home before he got a flat tire? Okay, here is the most tricky part about this problem, okay? But I'm gonna show you have prior learning, you have prior knowledge to apply to this new concept. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my whole number in my numerator and my whole number in my numerator from each of these fractions and show you that you kind of already know what to do. So my whole number is a three in the beginning and then I have a two. And then the bottom number is a two and a three. So what we're, what we're saying right now is our fractional pieces of my two eighths, and I'm going to show you what this looks like again, my two eighths is too small to take for my three eighths, right? But thankfully we have whole numbers to help us out. This looks like the 32 minus the 23, right? 
If two is smaller than three, it's not like you just can't do the problem. What you're going to do is go next door and you're going to borrow, right? We already know that from way long ago, second, third grade, maybe. So what we would do is we would take from the three, we would take one, a 10, we would rename this as a two and we would add the 10 over here to be a 12, right? You already know how to do this. I'm going to show you how to apply this knowledge with fractions, okay? So in fraction worlds, we don't have a next door. We don't have a 10. What that next door is, is our holes. So my two in my numerator is too small to subtract from my three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my front hole number three holes, and I'm going to borrow from my three holes. Okay. And what that's going to look like is I'm going to be transforming a one hole into fractions. So instead of taking one and making it a 10, I'm taking one and making it a fraction. Okay. And what that's going to look like is you are going to transform one hole into a equivalent fraction, which will be eight eighths. Okay. So remember I'm borrowing one and because my denominator is eight in this problem, that means my new problem is going to be eight over eight. Okay. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be changing one whole to eight one eighth pieces. Okay, so for E, now represent the exchange you made with the fraction strips using mixed numbers with an equation and then subtract. Okay, so I had three and two eighths. Let's see if I can fit it all in here. I had three and two eighths. What I did when I transformed it is I borrowed one, which left me with two. My one whole, I'm transforming into my fraction pieces, which is eight over eight. Remember any number top and bottom, if they're the same, it's equal to one. So I'm allowed to do that. So I'm transforming this into eight over eight. So I have two and I have one, but the one looks like eight over eight. That's worth my three in my whole number. I still have my two eights. So I need to put that back. Okay. So I'm renaming three and two eighths to be equal to two and 10 eighths. And all I did was add those two smaller fractions together, the eight and the two to be 10 eighths. Okay. So the renaming I was talking about in the I can and the learning objective is you're taking your three and two eighths and you're renaming, you're transforming a smaller numerator to be bigger. It's just like when we borrow next door and we add 10, we're borrowing from the whole number and making our numerator larger by doing what I was showing you with the fractional pieces. Okay, so my new front number is two and 10 eighths, okay? And then I need to subtract. So I have two and 10 eighths minus what I already had, which was two and three eighths from above. When I subtract two minus two is nothing. I have no more whole numbers, but my numerator 10 minus three, my denominators are the same, so I'm allowed to do that. 10 minus three is gonna be seven eighths, okay? So for F, how far does Larry walk his bike home? He walks seven eighths of a mile. All right, and I know this concept is pretty tricky, so it's okay if you're still a little bit confused. I'm gonna try going over the next page as well, and hopefully seeing it again in a different problem will help it click. So we're gonna move to page 162. It says the students in a fifth grade class and a fourth grade class ate some pizza. How many more pizzas did the fifth graders eat than the fourth graders? So if you look at the pizzas, you have one, two, three, four, five holes here. I have five holes here and then I have a fraction and then I have two holes here and then a fraction. So 
I want you to use these numbers and try your best to work through these problems. If you're just kind of lost, that's okay. Wait for the pause and then work through the problems together with me. But I do want you to give it your best and try to go through these on your own first. All right, so go ahead and click pause here. All right, great work. No problem if you couldn't get all the way through. If you could, great. Let's make sure that your work is correct. So for A, it says write an expression to model the problem. All right, so I have my five whole pizzas and then the fractional piece, I have one small piece out of six total available pieces. So that's gonna be one sixth. And I'm subtracting it from the fourth graders pizza, which was two holes and then two pieces showing out of three available pieces. So B, estimate the answer. My five and one six is really close to just five. And then my two and two thirds is pretty close to the next whole number, which would be three. And five minus three is two. So I'm going to guess my answer is going to be somewhere around two holes. All right, so for C, find a common denominator. Use the common denominator to write mixed numbers with equivalent fractions. So my common denominator between 6 and 3 is going to be 6. So I have my whole number 5 with my denominator 6. Subtract. Keep my whole number 2 with my denominator 6. I went from 6 to 6. No change. So the numerator doesn't change. I leave it as 5 and 1 6. For the second one, I go from 3 to 6, so I'm multiplying by 2. The numerator already there is 2, so I'm multiplying 2 times 2, which is 4. Okay, so you can subtract mixed numbers by renaming both numbers as fractions greater than 1. Rename each mixed number. So this is a little bit different. You're taking away the mixed number and you're making it an improper fraction. This is another way to solve if the renaming just didn't make sense to you. That's totally fine. This is another way to do it. There's just a couple more steps. All right, so for D, I know that I can take 5 and 1 6 and I can make it a complete improper fraction. And I do that by taking my starting at my denominator and going backwards like a C. So that, I'm going to show you what that looks like over to the side. So I have five and one six. I'm going to start at my six. I'm going to work my way up. I'm going to multiply here and then I'm going to add here. So six times five is 30 plus one is 31. So my numerator is going to be my numerator is going to be 31. Keep your denominator of six. Subtract. Do the same with your two and your four sixths. Start at your six, work your way up, multiply, and then add. So six times two is 12, plus four more is 16 over your common denominator of six. Okay, so I have in D 31 over 6 minus 16 over 6. In E, now I need to find the difference. Okay, so I'm going to be answering this, and then I'm going to rename my answer back to a mixed number. So 31 over 6 minus 16 over 6. When I subtract 31 minus 16, it's going to be 15 over 6. And I need to turn that back into a mixed number. So 6 goes into 15 two whole times to give me 12. So 15 to 12, that's just three left over, and that's my new numerator, keeping my denominator of six. If you um, change this to be a simplest form, it would be two and a half. All right, so for F, how many more pizzas did the fifth graders eat than the fourth graders? We just found that it was two and a half pizzas. And then G, is your answer reasonable? My answer was two and a half and my guess was two. So I'm right around that problem. So is my answer reasonable? Yes, because my actual answer and my estimate are very close. All right, so go ahead and finish up the rest of your problems in this lesson. And I will see you back for module seven, lesson five.